Dr. James Anderson, who was chief of endocrinology at the University of Kentucky Medical School, did a two-week test with his 20-year-old young normal man. And he gave them formula diets. For example, he gave them a diet made of corn oil, 5% corn oil in the diet, 80% carbohydrates, table sugar, and 15% protein, protein which was primarily dry curd cottage cheese. Now, when I say 80% carbohydrates of table sugar, I mean the pound of table sugar a day these young men had. He gave them another diet of only 20% carbohydrate and 65% fat. After two weeks' time, all those on the 65% fat diet, remember the American diet is 43% fat, on the 65% fat diet, they all tested diabetic. On the 5% fat diet, but a pound of table sugar a day, they all tested perfectly normal. I thought that sugar has something to do with diabetes. Why aren't these young men diabetic then? Well, he decided to carry this further. He took these young men who are on a pound of table sugar a day and continued it for another nine weeks. That's 11 weeks total, almost three months on a pound of table sugar a day. Yet at the end of that period, the young men tested perfectly normal. No problems at all. That teaches us whether or not sugar is a factor in creating diabetes or fat. Because as Dr. Felber has seen, only two hours of putting fat into the blood, they test diabetic. And Dr. Anders has seen three months of putting people on the pound of table sugar a day, and they're perfectly normal. Well, after a period of time, other investigators tried to understand what was happening, one of which was Dr. Hemsworth of England. Dr. Hemsworth of England taking up on these studies, and he did this, incidentally, in 1935, because the earliest works done on testing carbohydrate intolerance and so on for diabetics was done in the 20s and the 30s. When insulin first came in, they were able to experiment. And Dr. Hemsworth found that if he took young men and put them on a high-fat diet for a week, Every single time he did that, they test diabetic on a glucose tolerance test. And every time he took the same young men and put them on a low-fat diet for a week, without exception, they would test normal. And he decided to test it. He says, you know, it may be that the high fat paralyzes the body's insulin. In those days, they couldn't measure insulin too accurately. So he said, I'm going to inject insulin into them. We won't use the body's insulin. We won't give a glucose tolerance test. What we'll do is I'll simply inject insulin into them out of a syringe like we give to diabetics, and we'll see if that lowers, burns up their glucose for them. And so he put them on a very high fat diet, and he gave them a certain amount of insulin, three units of insulin, which is very insignificant, a very tiny amount. And the three units used up a certain amount of glucose on the high fat diet. Then he put the same in on a low fat diet and gave them the same amount of insulin from the same syringe measured the amount of glucose that it used up, and he was amazed to find that it, it used up 400% more glucose than when their blood had high fat in, than when it had low fat. Dr. Hemsworth was the first man, the first investigator, to really find out what fat does to insulin. In his test, he showed that <clears throat> it didn't make any difference <clears throat> whether it was <clears throat> your insulin or insulin that injects in a syringe. If you have high fat in your blood, the insulin cannot burn up the glucose. In those days, it wasn't understood why fat insensitizes insulin. It sort of paralyzed insulin. It wasn't understood at all, but we understand now because recent findings teach us this, that every cell, if you can picture a cell as a little round room, and if you can picture in this little round room that might be a hundred doors all around the boundaries, the circumference of this little room. And these little hundred doors are what we call sites, S-I-T-E-S. They're sort of areas where things cling to. And if you can say that out of these hundred doors, 20 of them belong to insulin. And insulin just sits at the door, and when glucose wants to come into the cell to be used for fuel, the, gluco the insulin opens the door and the glucose comes in. Now that's fine, but what if what happens, a very artificial thing happens, that instead of the insulin guiding the door, that the fat somehow becomes magnetized to the door, and when you get a certain amount of fat in your blood, when it reaches over a certain amount, the fat will preferentially get to those little doors and not let the insulin get to the doors. And the fat doesn't let the doors open when the glucose wants to come in. So all those doors stay closed, and the insulin can't get to it because the fat is blocking the way. When we take the fat out of your diet, 
The fat disappears from the doors, the insulin comes back and opens the doors and lets the glucose come in. And that's more or less the mechanism. The fat binds to these insulin binding sites in the cell and deprives the insulin <coughs> of being able to do their work. That's why when we take fat out of the diet of adult onset diabetic, in almost most cases, within three or four weeks, we're able to get rid of his extra insulin uh, that he injects through a syringe. And we've had diabetics on 180 units of insulin that we've gotten them off of within three or four weeks, and they have normal blood sugar values.